Pocket Echo Cardiography is really easy to use. Uh, you should find it for yourself. Uh, that it's really valuable in everyday practice. It can also be used by non-experts but who are uh, trained in pathologies that they will be looking for. Pocket Echo it does not replace a complete echocardiographic examination and pocket examination should also be reported as a part of physical examination, not as a complete echocardiographic examination. To avoid complications linked to lead implantation, leadless pacemakers and subcutaneous implantable cardiac defibrillators are being actively developed. We are facing a revolutionary technology that has the potential to shock patients out of ventricular fibrillation without implanting a lead and to pace patients in the future without a lead. However, we have to wait until more data are collected, so I would reserve these devices at this point in time for either young patients with a low incidence of ICD therapies over the next couple of years, or to patients who already have had tremendous problems with the venous excess. So microRNAs are small non-coding RNAs which gained very high interest because they can be nicely targeted by inhibitors so you can block them easily and thereby change a gene expression which is dysregulated after stress such as after acute myocardial infarction. Second, microRNAs can be measured in the circulating blood and might be interesting as biomarkers because they may indicate disease of the heart or of the vasculature. And at least in our hands, microRNA inhibitors, those which suppress the microRNA functions, are very well usable in mouse models. So they improve my, the recovery after acute myocardial infarction. For example, the microRNA 92A inhibitors, which we used. Mm -hmm. 